Hi my loves! In this video I want to share with you how I manifested a beautiful luxury villa in the Mediterranean which has been a dream of mine for so long so stay tuned and at the end of the video I reveal my super powerful manifestation technique that you can apply in your own life to manifest anything you desire to. by saying that I am not filming this video to show off or anything like that it actually has been a bit of a struggle for me and it took me about three months to work myself up to this video because this is not typically the type of content that I ever intended to publish most of my videos are about healing and ascension which I 100% believe in and it is my purpose to help people heal but I came to realize that both the healing part of the ascension as well as the creation part and the manifestation part of the ascension are necessary part of the process for you to step into the shoes of an enormously powerful creator to be able to create the life on your terms, life of your dreams. And this is very much the reason why I have decided to eventually shoot this video even though I've had so much resistance to, to doing that. I now very rarely do things to out from the ego. I am so connected to my higher self that I only ever do things that are genuinely aligned with my purpose, with who I am as a person and if any of that basically serves somebody else um, that is my number one drive to, to, to want to help, to want to serve, to want to add value and to want to um, encourage people that anything is possible. So that is very much the reason why I have decided to shoot this video. I will be sharing so many more stories, both personal stories and those of my clients who are going through the Ascension journey. And I want to illustrate that there is a certain process to the ascension that you need to go through. Um, initially, it, it, the process will break you, meaning that you may suffer from depression, anxiety, or um, even have a lot of physical challenges like I've had. I've had a broken back, literally um, three, four times, sleep disc, I've been in hospital several times in agonizing pains I and this happened very soon after I um, probably about six months after I've met my twin flame and I um, started the whole ascension process I came back from my travels around Asia and very soon after that I fell into this huge depression my whole body was in agony and I clearly have been releasing a lot of pain but at the time, I didn't know any of this. And it, it, at, at the time, to me, it, this was horrifying. I was in so much pain that I didn't know where I'm coming or going. I um, was living on painkillers, literally taking painkillers every three, four hours to be able to function, to be able to move from the bed into the kitchen and make myself a cup of tea. It was horrendously painful and agonizing and now, six years later, having gone through that process, I know why that was necessary. Um, I have had a narcissistic mother, extremely critical, never praised me, I've had a lot of worth issues, a lot of um, really deeply painful issues around rejecting myself, sabotaging myself around not being worthy of the things I love and cherish in my life, including love and wealth and abundance and freedom. And um, it, all that stemmed from the years of abuse, emotional, mental, and even physical abuse I've had from my mother. And even though I have healed a lot of that now, when I talk about it, it still like brings up 
this this feeling of sadness in me mostly because nobody ever deserves this but what I've come to realize that, um, that, that I have likely chosen that at the soul level to we all choose to experience both the beautiful things and the contrast so that we can then appreciate what it feels like to be abandoned you know we we experience poverty like i've had in my childhood to appreciate what it feels like to have abundance we experience somebody rejecting us to then experience what it feels like to be loved unconditionally by an enlightened, awakened soul who sees you for who you truly are. Um, and the same applies to pain. We choose to experience pain and suffering in order for us to then appreciate health and strength and physical vitality and beauty in our lives. So if you're somebody going through the ascension right now and if you're suffering and struggling, please just know that you will get through this. You have all it takes to get through that journey, to get through your healing and come out the other end, much stronger, much wiser, much more self-empowered to create the life of your dreams on your terms. So without further ado, let me show you this beautiful villa that uh, I have manifested and watch till the end where I will reveal my method, my law of attraction method that I now use for everything to get the things I truly desire. So here it goes. So finally, let me give you the process I've used to attract this gorgeous villa in Cyprus and one that you can use in your life too to create anything you desire. I call this process a sensory magnetism. What it means, you're basically tapping into all of your senses to call in what you desire. The number one most important sensory experience that your subconscious mind understands is feeling. And we all know now that your subconscious mind is um, so much more powerful than your conscious mind. It controls over 95% of your biology and therefore significantly contributes to the reality that you are creating on a day-to-day -day basis. So how can you use this law of attraction process in practice? Over the past four years, I have worked incredibly hard to reprogram all of my limiting beliefs and also to identify any unconscious fears and unconscious self-sabotage that is actually blocking me from manifesting my dream life. I go into depth about this in my book called I Believe and also in my Twin Flame Ascension course if you would like to supercharge your healing and really boost your manifestations too. So to me there are three steps to this process first of all so decide what you want and have 100% clarity on on your desire so for me I knew I wanted to live by the sea I uh, um, knew I wanted to live in a warm Mediterranean country because previously prior to that I've lived in England it's always cold and raining so for me sunshine was really important and I also knew that I wanted to be alive with a pool because I love swimming. So those were my my basic criteria. Um, so I highly encourage you to write down your number one desire that you are focusing on manifesting and what are the key aspects of the desire that you truly want. Make a list, make a list of the things that really mean something to you, whether that, that is having a pool or living in a sunny country or having a beautiful home you call your own, having an extra bedroom in your house or moving to a suburb um, or by the to the beach where you've always wanted to live. So make it specific but focus on the feeling. So for example, for me, 
Um, when I was imagining and, and sort of feeling into this uh, manifestation, the number one thing that I wanted to feel was soothed by the nature. I am an empath, a highly sensitive person, and um, I really struggle in big cities um, because the energy there is often very heavy and very stressful. I pick up on all that energy and I don't feel that well. So for me to live in a, a much more soothing, uh, nature-esque environment was number one criteria because knowing myself, um, I now know what works for me. Um, and so make a list, be very clear on your desire and make a list of all the attributes that are super meaningful and important to you. The second thing is the second step I would work on is to identify any limiting beliefs and unconscious fears that are actually blocking you from manifesting the thing that you desire. So in my case, it was uh, mostly around not, not being worthy of it, feeling like if I have this, other people will judge me or will be jealous of me and I didn't want to feel that. So I naturally blocked it, blocked the creation, and that's why it took me four years to bring this into, into, into creation. But now I am more familiar with the process of the law of attraction. I know exactly how to go about it. So it is um, much easier for me to spot any unconscious fears, limiting beliefs that actually block my manifestations. And this is what I highly encourage you to do too, to really self-reflect on your own limiting beliefs that might be blocking you from creating what you truly desire and be brutally honest with yourself you don't have to show this to anybody you know this is not um for show this is not to be shared this is simply your own things that um maybe you've picked up in your childhood from your teachers from your parents from environment culture any stereotypes about man woman what you know what they should or shouldn't do what you are allowed to have in your life anything around scarcity um, and worth, um, I guarantee you will be massively blocking your manifestations and also ease of that. If you have beliefs such as um, manifesting is hard or uh, to manifest big things is super hard, um, then um, you have to change those first through affirmations and through uh, reconditioning yourself back up to the ease of it so back up to feeling like it's easy for me to have everything i want it's it's super fast and easy for, for me to manifest everything i desire um i believe in my power to manifest these are super important beliefs to have on the subconscious level of the mind if you ever want to manifest something um into your reality so that's the second process, second step in the process. Identify any limiting beliefs and unconscious fears that actually hold you back from having what you truly desire. And the third thing is to move to the meditation. So I would meditate initially as I was healing and I was releasing a lot of old um, beliefs and blocks and sabotage, even the narcissistic abuse that I have gone through. It took me probably about an hour every morning to, to meditate um, and condition myself back up to the state of wholeness. Dr. Joe Dispenza has this transcendence meditation where he basically encourages, encourages his student not to get out of the meditation until they feel amazing, until they feel like they are whole, they, they believe that they're worthy of everything they desire until it feels natural to you, until you're flowing, until you're in such a state of bliss and joy that there is none, none of that internal dialogue going on that you are, you know, what are you doing? You're stupid. You, you know, this doesn't make any sense. You're making this up. This is just some madness or nonsense. And a lot of us um, have this in a dialogue. I've had that at the beginning when I was trying to manifest where my mind my conscious mind and a lot of my fears would step in and would create all sorts of um quite negative dialogues on the inside of me like who do you think you are you know this is stupid this this is never gonna work and i had to really uh, release all of that and condition myself back up to what i truly genuinely desire from the bottom of my heart to believe in to believe that i'm powerful that I'm a powerful creator, that I can have it all, to believe that manifesting is easy, to believe that law of attraction is um, just as natural as the law of gravity, 
that it is our natural state to manifest easily and quickly um, and it is only the limited conditioning the societal cultural religious um, family conditioning that we have acquired from the very early age that is actually blocking us from having what we want and from ha from manifesting super fast and super easily so can you see how this journey of ascension and journey to mastering the law of attraction is not as much about learning something new but more about releasing all of the old stuff all the layers of conditioning the layers of illusions the layers of fears the layers of limiting beliefs the layers of core negative beliefs that actually hold you back from being whole from feeling supercharged with energy and this is so important to understand and embody um, to be able to go on further and start you know creating things bringing things into your creation calling things in in into your life with ease um, the whole process of enlightenment basically means that you are leaving old baggage behind you so that you can enlighten yourself and that energy of enlightenment ultimately aligns you with your higher self with the person you truly are at the soul level as a enormously powerful immortal spiritual being having a human experience who is able to bring things into creation at with ease you know super fast without any resistance without any blocks that is your natural state but you first have to believe it and you first have to remove from your system anything that is currently causing you the blocks in your energy and I really want to kind of elaborate a little bit on how to meditate another aspect I want you to consider is to reflect on what kind of person you are how do you perceive information are you somebody who's audible who hears things hears guidance receives information through the sound through you know or, or the clear audience are you somebody who is very visual and you have visions you kind of you you love to perceive information through the visual format or are you somebody who is more um clairsentient we are all clairsentient um to some degree but the trouble is that as we were children a lot of that innate ability for us to feel has been beaten out of us um how many times have you heard that bullshit being you know said to you as a child whether you are a boy or a girl that you know boys don't cry and stuff your feelings or even as a girl i wasn't allowed to feel i wasn't allowed to express myself the way i desired because my mother considered it a huge weakness so be super conscious of your own persona how you like to perceive information and then if you have a dominant sense in one aspect you may have you know dominant clairaudience or you might be very visual then supercharge those in your meditations because it will be natural to you and that's where you will naturally want to go and flow um if you're somebody who feels deeply but you you struggle with visual visualizations then just focus on the feeling do what's true for you do what's natural to you because your own nature will help you to manifest things with so much ease and um, grace so let me talk a little bit about the actual meditation process so you can do this by laying down by sitting down sitting in a lotus position whatever works for you but just make sure that you focus on one thing at a time and dedicate a whole day at least a whole day if not a whole week to conditioning yourself for that desire and um so for example for me i um remember when i first started um, applying the law of attraction six seven years ago I really struggled with this because I kept hopping from one thing to another. So one minute I wanted to have a house, the next minute I wanted to, I don't know, lose weight, the next minute I wanted to um, get a better job or whatever it was. And it just wasn't working for me. 
Um, so I had to really make sure that I honed the energy. I, I focused the energy on the one desire that was super meaningful to me. And instead of dispersing the energy into three, four, five, ten different things, I laser focused and honed onto the one thing that was most important to me in this moment right now. And that would make the biggest difference in my life. So for me, I knew that as an empath, I would thrive in, a, in an environment that is very soothing, that is full of nature and beauty around me. And um, I really wanted to feel soothed by the nature every day so if I go for a walk by the sea if I, I am surrounded by trees and birds I feel inspired on this place manifesting is super easy super fast it's super effortless seamless beautiful you'll experience so much synchronicity that they guide you onto the next step and next step and next step and it's just basically um it's helping you to create and manifest the things that you've always wanted to bring into creation for you uh, but before you get to this stage i i really want you to um, i want to make sure that you get the meditation right so as you meditate on your desire i already spoken about how to pick the one thing that is most meaningful to you from so for me it was to have a beautiful home in the lovely soothing nature environment where i can create the products um, that would make a difference to other people um, in their healing ascension and uh, ultimately their happiness and um so I would basically meditate every morning and I would connect with the desire. I would set an intention that would go something like this. I intend to have a beautiful villa in the Mediterranean. I didn't even specify the country. I just said Mediterranean um, in a warm, sunny country. And then the minute I sort of started to open up that um, visual of what I wanted it to be like, I would see the sun, I would feel the, the warmth of the sun on my skin, I would see all the flowers and the trees around me, I would hear the birds singing, um, I would feel so happy and so grateful for this moment that I have it right here, right now, that there is nothing missing in my life. And um, can you see how I'm utilizing all of the senses? I would even use my voice to speak. I am so grateful for this extraordinary villa. I feel so soothed here in this glorious environment. I create effortlessly the products that are meaningful to me, um, that, are, that bring value to the world and make a difference in somebody else's life. And um, I would basically then come out of this meditation. I would go as far as I possibly could take it. And each each um, day, sometimes I would spend month on just this one thing. And each day I would expand it. I would visualize myself going for walks to the beach. I would swim in a pool. I would um, um, see myself riding by the beach. And sort of each day I expanded the vision more and more. A feeling already having it in the now. I felt as if though I was transported to that place in my heart and I was walking the walk by the beach. I was sitting, um, you know, by the pool or, or sunbathing or writing and creating the cause in this glorious environment. And, um, and then when I felt like I really believed that I'm worthy of this, when I reprogrammed all of the beliefs, when I reprogrammed all of my subconscious fears, then I would simply, you would intuitively know when it's when you're ready, when it's true for you, when this is yours. And then I released it up to the universe to say, I trust this is already mine and I trust that this will come to me in the most beautiful, unexpected ways in the perfect timing and this whole letting go process was easier because i already believed it on the subconscious level of the mind so intensely that um it became so easy to release it because i already felt it's mine it's mine and i think this is where most of people are going wrong where they they release it before they believe it and this is why they struggle to manifest so if you're one of them I highly encourage you to focus on one desire for a week, month, 
even a year until you feel like it's already yours until you feel like it's true for you do it through the meditation through the sensual sort of sensory experiences bringing things into your reality feeling having them enjoying them tasting them touching them walking through um you know that beach and enjoying the the the, the warmth of the sun on your skin or whatever you you might be looking to manifest one other thing i really wanted in my house um, was a fireplace and it was such a joy for me to find out when we first viewed this place this this house has a, a gorgeous um fireplace we had it lit um so many evenings and i would just write um over the winter time uh, and um you know coast up on a sofa to um, my beautiful partner and um you know we would snuggle and watch films and it was just so romantic and so beautiful so you can have anything you want as long as you follow a powerful process and you condition yourself to believe it so if i leave it here and i just summarize the three steps so step number one be clear on what you desire create a list and make it specific step number two is to reprogram identify and reprogram all of your unconscious beliefs and fears any self-sabotage that holds you back that prevents you from attracting what you truly desire step number three is to use the sensory attraction process every morning or every evening for at least half an hour to bring that desire into creation through your senses you know touch it feel it taste it imagine yourself having it and above all feel the joy and gratitude for it for it in your heart expand it focus on it 100 percent until you believe it so much that it feels so true to you and to some people this takes a couple of days a couple of months um for me it took me four years to believe i am worthy of having this and then when you do you simply release it into the universe and um and trust that it's already yours so this is my um sensory magnetism attraction process that i use that now works for me like like magic um to um, and has helped me to attract this gorgeous villa where i'm now um with a beautiful pool in the mediterranean and i really want you to have this process and use it um to create amazing things in your life you're worthy of having everything you desire remember that and if i can overcome so much pain and abuse and self-sabotage and um you know go through this ascension process and come out the other and stronger wiser um much more committed to myself and my dream life than i've ever been then trust that you can do it too i believe in you i'm sending you so much love peace and joy namaste